away from another rainy day in Split. That's weird. Our very first day here in Split rained. Absolutely teamed it down. Yep. And we've got a bit of drizzle at the moment, but it does say on the weather again it's going to be absolutely chucking it down. It's like history's repeated itself, isn't it? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just uh, noticed this cool little area. Looks like a basketball court, but yeah, some really nice murals here. What I like about Croatia is that they tend to graffiti like areas like this, but then they'll leave well alone the beautiful murals and stuff. And in the UK, somebody will come along and, and create a uh, like a lovely bit of artwork in the street, and uh, almost instantly okay, somebody will like you know graffiti over it, some sort of terrible tag that you can't understand barely read some really poor quality tag <laughs> so they don't do that here which is quite nice so what's the plan for today well we've been looking around because uh, it's our final day in split and uh, we've been researching things we want to be doing and you know anything anything of interest uh, specifically outside of split itself and we discovered a place called Castel Castel Gomilitsa which is uh, a little town just uh, outside of Split. It's part of Split, but it's just a little town outside, outside of it. And uh, it's a very, very old town. It's a 16th century castle town. So uh, Castel, or Castella, means castle. And basically, uh, Castel Gormilica uh, is a town which is uh, part of seven other towns. So there's seven different Castells, or castle towns. And uh, they were built in the 16th century and the one we're going to was built by uh, Benedictine monks um, and the land was gifted to them by uh, King, I think his name was Zvonomir um, and they built this beautiful little town outside of Split and uh, for some reason people don't tend to visit it all that much some people call it the Venice of, uh, of Croatia because it's a little, uh, it's got like canals and stuff but um, essentially, it's an ancient old town with a lot of history and a lot of character. So we thought we'd go and check it out. So uh, join us in our exploration of a 16th century castle town in Croatia. So welcome to Castel Gumlitsa. And it's nice to be out of the, uh, out of the hustle and the bustle, to be honest. There's no tourists around here. Um, there's not even any writing in English. So even the information is uh, in Croatian. So that's one thing that you'll notice when you get out of the hustle and bustle of a, a tourist trap or a tourist area, is that the location becomes a bit more authentic, but obviously with it, the language barrier will uh, become more of a prevalent issue. Though perhaps not so much in Croatia because uh, many of the Croatians I've uh, met so far have told me that you know, they learn how to speak English in school. It's quite a widely spoken language. Which is crazy really, because uh, I was speaking to a guy the other day. Well, this was in Bosnia. He was a Bosnian, but he lived in Croatia. His name was uh, Vlad. Really cool guy. So if you're watching this, if you're by any small chance you're watching this, Vladimir, uh, it was great to meet you, dude. You're a cool guy. And you taught me a lot about, uh, about Croatia and Bosnia. But he was a Croatian living in Bosnia. And he said, from school age, they tend to learn how to uh, speak English from quite a young age. So they call this the Venice of Croatia, or the mini Venice of Croatia. Well, some people do. You can kind of see why. It's uh, got this little kind of harbour, fishing town feel. And here is the uh, Castellats. So Castel is a castle. As I may have mentioned, I'm not entirely sure if we're allowed through here. Let's have a look. Here we go, look. So Fort Castellac was built by the Benedictine nuns from the nunnery of St. Renario and split between 15, 1529 and 1537. Mad. Absolutely crazy how old it is. Um, I'm not entirely sure we're allowed through there, so I'm not going to go through there just yet, but... Uh, Let's continue to explore and see what a Croatian little town off the beaten trail looks like. So, got that really fresh sea air, which is really nice. 
and uh, I don't know if I'm in someone's garden I'm kind of hoping I'm not um, I will apologize to them if I am but yeah it's as close to the water as you can get really without going for a swim and uh, nice little views So it's a very very ancient place 16th century it just blows my mind to think of the history i'm going to try and go through that little castle area if someone stops us then i'll apologize and uh I'm try and explain that we don't know much but let's go inside this bit inside the castle itself or the castella and let's see the uh the history oh look at these Look at these, these are massive. So this is uh, as old school as you can get really. Benedictine nuns built this place. And this was gifted to them by King, King Zvonimir. And uh, yeah, it won't be too loud because it's uh, someone's area. I don't know if that guy over there is telling us off. Is it? The guy over there telling us off, I can't tell. Mm. Was he speaking to someone? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. <laughs> so, yeah. This is a. Uh, look at this, I can't speak Croatian, so if someone can tell me what that says, that'll be very nice. There's a random guy over there. He's uh, chatting to someone. But oh, wow. Look at this. This is old school. Old, old school. Just think of the history here. Think of the nuns walking these cobbled streets all those years ago. And how it was built. So the castle itself, or the castella, is uh, just over there. I'm going to have a look at that in a minute. But, um, yeah, the castle. Uh, there's a castle over there. Oh, this might actually be the castle. So it looks like they've built a commune inside the castle walls itself. And it must have gradually expanded over time. But yeah, no tourists here. Perfect. Oh, army flooded. Careful, it's flooded. Don't think I can really go down there. But there you go. <laughs> yeah, I may have said this a few times in the vlog, but our shoes aren't waterproof, even though they claim to be. We purchased, both of us got waterproof shoes on Amazon for the purpose of, uh, purpose of these treks. There's some stairs up there, but I don't know how safe that would be to walk up there. And to be honest, there's not much up there to see. But, nice bit of artwork there. I don't know what's through here, let's get a peep. What's that? Anything of interest? You can see more than I can. So yeah, I believe this is the castle itself. The Castel, Castel, I don't know how to say, say Castel, and uh, yeah, just crazy how old everything is in there. And then you walk out here and it's like a harbour, kind of fishing port town. Very, very beautiful. So yeah, uh, yeah, with it being our last day in Split, I was like, okay, well, you know, what can we do? that gets away from the tourists but allows us to stay within Split itself and uh, a few of the locals said well here's, there's the Castel the Castels themselves and uh, that place lives and breathes history which is what brought us here and uh, yeah I must say actually it's, it is quite nice off the beaten trail we have to take a bus here oh look at this See that little crab? See if I'm getting the shot correctly. There you go. 
cover right there, I won't disturb him or her, the crustacean. <laughs> Don't think uh, I'll be too keen on getting a bite or sorry, a nip on my final day. Yeah, this is just people's homes and we've got a bus here. Uh, so if you're interested in coming to Castel Gomilitsa, then uh, it's uh, the number 37 in split and you'll be able to see it. It's one of the stops, Castel Gomilitsa. We'll show you the uh, the stop itself. But yeah, there's the castle up here. And it's just crazy to think that like, you know, they've built homes and lives into this castle, into the very castle walls. But yeah, if you're interested in the history, then freeze frame right there. And I'm getting a bit closer for you. And yeah, you know, if you want to get a little bit of more of the beaten trail and explore a uh, split in its more raw form, then uh, this may be for you. You know, one thing we try and do on Team McGrath is wherever we go, we try and break off the tourist areas and uh, go and have a look and see how the locals live and explore, you know, local life. You know, we try to be respectful and quiet, obviously. it's a, it's a Friday today, people are probably working on their boats or come home from work and wanting to chill so don't want to be too loud. That's why my voice is a bit quieter today. But uh, yeah, Cash del Gomilitsa. Let's see what else it has to offer. So it's got the same kind of the same kind of vibe. Yeah the uh, the architecture it's still very, very much in keeping with Split itself. But it's got more of a harbour feel. And uh, yeah, the locals, they were saying to me, um, I was like, you know, I was like, Split's beautiful, I love your town. Or your, is, it, is, this, is it a city or a town? I love your, I love your place. <laughs> I love what you've done with the place, I love it. But for me, I wanna go and see something that the, the locals would enjoy and recommend. What would you recommend? And they said, oh yeah, Castel Gomelitsa. And uh, here we are for that reason. So thank you to, it was Maria, I think it was, who recommended this place to us. So thank you, Maria, for all you've done and your advice. Yeah, let's go and have a look down here. And you've got mountains in the background and people's homes. Let's go and see what's down here. So yeah, taking you on a little tour to somewhere you perhaps wouldn't usually go. As I say, we took the 37, we was in Split, took the 37. Well, actually we was in Split, we was in uh, at the harbour. So we took the number two, Dva. <laughs> we took the number two and then we rode, I think it was like four stops and then, uh, We've got the 37 and uh yeah here we are and it was a well it was a difficult journey i'm not gonna lie actually it was a very very packed bus it was like being in london it was so strange it was it was all sardine canned in and we was on it for like 30 odd minutes oh yeah taking care of the recycling but yeah this is it man this feels more like it a bit more rural a bit more out there, a bit more off the beaten trail. That's what we wanted. So, in terms of Team McGrath, we've got some plans. I was going to say, should we sit here? But Probably better not. Better not. I think the tides come in. Let's uh, yeah, let's uh, have a closer look at that. <laughs> I think Tam wanted us to sit over here. Yeah. <laughs> no dogs. So yeah, we uh, unfortunately have lost our window of opportunity to sit on the benches here because the tide's in. Yeah, so the church is just nearby and as you can see, we're in the home of Hajuk Split. That's how you say it, Hajuk. Um, someone correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but uh, that's the football team of the area. And they're quite a big team actually. They operate in the Croatian, the Croatian League. 
the highest league in Croatia. And you might be familiar with them from Champions League football, they do compete. But there you go. There's a church there. Rather beautiful. And uh, yeah, let's get a bit more Croatian town life living perspective. So Tommy's gone off to go and find a, uh, a bite to eat because we've got a long day ahead of us. So we've got a six and a half hour wait until our, until our plane arrives. And then uh, we've got a two and a half hour journey back to the UK. We hit down in the UK at about 20 past 11 and we've got to run straight through security, hopefully that's straightforward. And then we've got a train from Luton Airport to London, London to Peterborough where we live. And then finally relax our feet after what's been quite, a, uh, quite an adventure. But I would definitely recommend doing this people. Go and uh, book yourself a week off somewhere and take a coach or a Flix bus or whatever, whatever your preference is and uh, hop from town to town, village to village, city to city, whatever your preference is and go and have a look around. But this is what I'm talking about. This is, this is the side of Croatia I wanted to see before I left. Little villages little towns where people live on a day-to-day -day basis. Kind of reminds me actually, I was in a, I was in Greece. Oh, this is a dead end. Look at a lime tree over there. Yeah, pretty much a dead end. I was in Greece. I might have told this story already on a separate video. But I'll tell it again if you missed it. I was in Greece. And this was before we started doing YouTube. And, uh, oh, hello kitty. Hello. Oh. <laughs> some cats can sense I'm a cat person, some can't. But um, I was in Greece, stayed in the place called Antimatia. And this was before we started YouTube. And it was that journey that got me thinking about doing a YouTube channel. Because uh, we went right off the beaten trail and ended up in a, a really small little village. And there was goats and chickens running around and uh, it was really off the beaten trail and I was like man people might find this interesting this kind of stuff you know looking at these more you know when you see split you're always seeing the same stuff like the harbour but you'll never see you know people's lives look at that oh, pan <laughs> I had that yesterday. I'm oh, sorry, I had that today. I asked for a Kalavachko. Well, we don't have Kalavachko. I was like, okay. Do you have a Zhuskog, which is my other favorite beer in Croatia? And they're like, nope. And I was like, we got Pan. I was like, that was Pan. And I was like, it's another beer from Croatia. It's a lager. And I was like, all right, well, I'll give it a, I'll give it a spin. I'll try it. That was really good. So I'm hoping I can get that back in the UK but I'm going to have to definitely keep an eye on my phone. When I went on my little excursion through Dubrovnik, Tammy bless her, <laughs> I left her about half an hour down the road to go off and walk in this random uh, little village in the outskirts. Yeah, yeah. Random little village and she got so, so worried. She thought I just left her high and dry. But yeah, look down there. This is what it's all about. Lots of, uh, lots of traffic though, so it must be a bit more of a popular area than I initially expected. But yeah, no tourists. So I made good on my promise to show you a place in Split with no tourism. And where we were staying in Mostar, there was absolutely no tourists at all. We were really off the beaten track. Look at this, it's a standoff. It's a standoff. But yeah, I can't go too far because Tammy will probably wonder where I've been. I wonder where the hell I've gone. <laughs> but uh, I just love this. I love the little uh, 
you know, little quiet streets and stuff away from it all. I really do. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about, man. This is how people actually live. You know, imagine waking up to that every morning as well. It'd be amazing, wouldn't it? You know, I'll wake up to uh, burn out cars. <laughs> But everywhere is so steep as well, it's one thing I've noticed. But yeah, I'm pretty much coming to the end here of a of a path. Really is quite uh, quite rural in many ways. Not the side of split that you see in the usual YouTube videos. But um yeah. Yeah. Don't wake up to these views where I'm from. And that's what fascinates me, you know what I mean? It really interests me how people actually live their lives. In these places because i think it all started actually i was in uh i think it could have been prague and i met this person um can't remember his name but he was a cool guy uh, way before we started the youtube channel years ago and uh he was like yeah where are you from i'm like, oh england and he was like oh nice man but england's cool i was like no nah, not really and he was like oh oh okay <laughs> When expecting that, I thought it was going to be really cool. Oh, you see London, it looks really cool. And I was like, yeah, you see the London that everybody wants you to see. But you don't see the actual uh, the suburbs and where people live unless you watch UK crime documentaries or you know, gangster movies. <laughs> you ain't going to really see that. And I doubt that there's a huge deal of exposure to that kind of stuff outside of the UK itself. I don't know if they've got country file in Turkey, for instance, <laughs> Country File, if you're wondering, was a UK program uh, around the countryside. I don't even know if it's on anymore. But um, it, but then he said something to me, it kind of changed my mind forever. He was like, yeah, same here with Prague. It's crap, it's boring. I was like, bruv, look around you. It's beautiful. What are you talking about? He was like, you just said the same thing. London, it's glitz and glam here but then over here not so glitz and glum and i was like nah you gotta be wrong mate so i'll tell you what then come for a tour with me so for a few days me and tommy went around with this uh well it's not a few days to be honest a few hours <laughs> it felt like a few days that was quite quite the eye opener but i went around this with this chap and uh, he showed us his local area and stuff and the life and I think he was expecting me to hate it. Be like, oh yeah, you're right, but I loved it. That's wicked, it's amazing. He was like, mate, look at it, it's terrible. It's all crumbling, falling to bits. He was like, this is the side of uh, Prague that you tourists don't see. I was like, this is, this is beautiful. This is the real beauty. He was like, how did you figure that out? I was like, because it's real. It's real, man, it's, it's authentic. No polish, there's no veneer, it's real. And there is true beauty in reality, in my opinion. That's where the true beauty lies. I mean, look at this, for instance. How old do you think that is, that building? You know what I mean? How old do you think that stone actually is? You know, what stories do you reckon this church has seen? And the same with this castle as well, you know? Was it, no, it's not a castle, it's, it is a church, sorry. The castle, was it the castle earlier? But what, what stories does it tell? You know, what histories? Or what has these walls seen? You know, these, I know I'm looking a bit too far. That, these iron bars, for instance, yeah? Let you see just there, all right? What history has this stone seen? We just see it every day, but what history has it witnessed? You know, has it seen the rise and fall of an empire? Has it seen people come and go over the years? Of course it has. You know what I mean? And that's, that's, you ain't gonna find that. You will find it, obviously, out and about. But you won't find it everywhere. But wow, look at that. A 12th century church. Look at that, look. Absolutely mesmerizing. I love history. Absolutely love it. And uh, just think, you know, had I not taken that person's advice today and jumped on a little bus from Split and came here to Castel Gumilitsa. I may have never seen that 12th century church. I may have never have seen this beautiful church here as well. 
I may have never have seen the little fishing port that was built by Benedictine nuns in the 16th century. Such an eye opener. So it's w really worth a go. Get out of there, get through this tour, get out of the tourist areas and go and see what life's like, you know? For some, it may be a bit too, a bit too real, but for me, it's, it's where the true beauty lies.